Russia and pregnancy. Get ready to learn more information about this culture and how they view pregnancy. Presented by myself, Noemi Carino, and my group, Alec, Ceci, and Tornado. Next slide. The Russian culture has a very particular form of dealing with the topic of pregnancy. Women may not speak about the concerns they have about their pregnancy freely. They especially may not share the news of their pregnancy with friends or family until the baby is born. This implies no baby showers before the child's birth or any special attention from the family or friends towards the pregnancy as their culture feels this could convey the evil eye to the baby jinxing the pregnancy with complications. After the baby is born, their belief is that the baby may not be shown in public until their cultural 40-day postpartum period has passed. The Russian culture states, no one can see the baby until they are sure the baby is healthy and will not pass. Only at this time is when the mother is allowed to share the news about her newborn baby and speak about the months she was pregnant in public. Next slide. The level of involvement both the mother and father have in the pregnancy indirectly causes a negative environment for the growing fetus in utero. The culture strongly influences the attention and recognition the growing baby receives from both parents during the pregnancy. In the previous slide, I shared the role of the mother of how she deals with pregnancy. Now let's talk about the role of the father. The Russian culture encourages the father not to be involved in the pregnancy. During the months the mother is carrying the baby in her wound, the father shows zero emotion towards the pregnancy and does not acknowledge the existence of the growing fetus until after the 40-day culture postpartum period has passed, knowing for certain that the baby is healthy and will not die. Only at this time is when the father may become involved in the care of the newborn baby and show interest. Next slide. According to the census, if we look over the most recent infant mortality rate for both Russia and the U.S., Russia had a 4997 death per 1,000 live births, a 3.68% decline from 2021, where the U.S. had a 5547 deaths per 1,000 live births, a 1.19% decline from 2021. From comparing these two years, you could probably say Russia has a lower death per live births, but if we look over the same data throughout the last four years, this chart actually provides more information on the topic that says otherwise. If we compare the U.S. to Russia, we could say the U.S. is continuously attempting to reduce infant mortality as their decline percent number has always lowered from the previous year. Russia, on the other hand, their decline percentage has remained about the same or slightly elevated from the previous year, showing the problem that is causing complications in pregnancy has continued unresolved, resulting in high infant deaths. The Russian culture is very traditional, and sadly, the result is high infant mortality. Although we know there are numerous complications that could present in pregnancy, this culture, a traditional form of caring for pregnancy, has caused many parents to miss pregnancy complications developing. For this presentation, we will focus on how the Russian culture could lead pregnant women to suffer from depression and anxiety, which can severely influence the well-being of the developing baby. In the next slide, we will discuss more on the topic. Antipartum considerations for the Russian culture. As discussed before, pregnancy for Russian women tend to be more of an individual experience, which may lead to social isolation, separation from social supports, poor sleep, and high levels of stress. High stress levels during the antipartum period, due to the lack of support or healthcare system, can put the mother at risk of high blood pressure, which may lead to preeclampsia and heart disease. Constant stress during pregnancy may lead to a premature birth a low birth weight, or even a spontaneous abortion. When a woman experiences stress, her body produces cortisol. This adversely affects the immune system of pregnant women and adversely affects the health of the unborn child. Chronic stress over the course of a few weeks may slow fetal development and result in future problems in raising the child. The constant elevations of maternal cortisol reduces blood flow to the fetus, which deprives the fetus of oxygen and nutrients. 
Overall, the maternal healthcare system in Russia is viewed through a conservative Soviet lens. As a result, can make the mother feel very isolated and alone. The conservative approach includes a paternalistic style of communication, lack of ethical concern, outdated medical practices, and overall medicalization of birth, with medical personnel focusing primarily on the bureaucratic demands rather than the patient's needs and psychological comfort. Next slide, please. During the interpartum period of pregnancy, the needs and concerns of the pregnant Russian women are pushed aside. The inability to address the needs and concerns of the mother during the labor period may result in emotional and physical complications in the future. Studies indicate that the maternal psychological well-being after childbirth is associated with a sense of security, the ability to make her own decisions, and continuous support during labor. However, in Russia, women frequently lack support during labor since small regional maternal hospitals can still prevent partners from attending the birth, and a doula or private midwife is available only by paid contract, not through the public health sector. Studies have shown that the av availability of support and psychological comfort during labor is crucial in reducing the risk of postpartum depression. The lack of control during the antepartum period and the sense of isolation during delivery can put a certain toll on the mother. These unfavorable experiences can have a negative effect on their view of birth and can deter them from having future pregnancies. Ultimately, these women are more likely to have a neonate requiring a neonatal intensive care unit admission, prolonged hospitalization, and complicated postnatal course, which are also risk factors for symptoms of postpartum mood disorders. Next slide, please. Postpartum considerations. After birth, mothers stay in the hospitals for about five to seven days. During this time, fathers and immediate family members can only associate with a mother and newborn through a glass window. This is to keep bacteria from getting into the newborn, but oftentimes creates social isolation. Due to the lack of social support, anxiety, negative birth experience, and other OB issues, Russian women are prevalent to develop postpartum depression. They often have feelings of hopelessness, mood changes, and severe lack of sleep. In a recent study, it was found that PTSD was highly correlated with postpartum depression. Russian women who had a greater number of cesarean births and medical interventions were likely to develop PTSD. The women struggled to vent their issues to medical professionals because it isn't openly discussed and doctors rarely diagnose the condition. There's a stigma attached to admitting mental health struggles and some women are afraid that their child will be taken away from them. Newborn Considerations the new father tends to be engrossed in other responsibilities such as work and financial stresses instead of having a close relationship with their newborn. Russian men often begin to develop depression because of the change in the family dynamic. Attitudes towards fatherhood and masculinity can mean that they are less likely to talk about how they feel. The father will not get paternal leave and has little time with a newborn and the mother in the first couple months, which can cause more struggles and anxiety for the women. During the first month, Russian women and newborns often stay with the maternal or paternal grandparents and are expected to share some of the responsibilities of looking after the newborn. Russian women often feel afraid that the evil eye will get to their newborn, so they tend to put a pin on the baby's bed and stroller. This leads to even more isolation and psychological stress in the mother. Baby massage is practiced after the first month at home by mothers. Often this practice can relieve stress and anxiety in the mother and newborn. This practice also helps newborns with the release of oxytocin, stimulates growth, and helps them sleep. Due to the cultural practice of distancing themselves from family, friends, and significant others, mothers are at an increased risk of ineffective coping and developing postpartum depression. Therefore, our nursing diagnosis for mom is risk for ineffective coping related to lack of support system. Our goal is that the patient will verbalize three signs and symptoms of impaired coping and three ways they can reach out for support by discharge. Our first intervention would be to observe for contributing factors of ineffective coping, such as poor interest or bonding with the neonate, poor self-concept, and lack of support. This is important because as nurses, we will be witnessing the immediate adjustment the mother makes with her child. Early identification and treatment are crucial for improving overall outcomes for the mother and infant, as well as for decreasing mortality and morbidity. 
Our second intervention focuses on discussing signs and symptoms of poor coping and creating a culturally appropriate plan with the patient on ways to decompress. This will help the patient to be aware of when to get help, and it also provides a list of things that can be done to help relieve stress or anxiety. These are things such as music therapy, exercising, and meditating. The main point here is that by working with the patient to create a plan, it allows the patient to identify what they believe works best for them. And finally, our third intervention is to educate patient on online support groups, hotlines, and cognitive behavioral therapy. Getting help is important because postpartum depression gets worse over time and does not go away on its own. Since therapy sessions can be done online, this will allow the mother to get support while keeping the tradition of distancing the baby from others. Next slide, please. Now that you understand how a Russian mother would be at risk for ineffective coping, her actions or lack of also impact the care of the newborn. It's important to remember that throughout mom's pregnancy and the 40 days postpartum, the lack of involvement from the father places the newborn at a greater risk for poor bonding. Therefore, our nursing diagnosis for the newborn is risk for impaired attachment related to loss of emotional bond with parents. Our goal is that the patient will demonstrate behaviors that indicate secure parent-infant attachment by discharge. Our first intervention is to help the patient recognize and support the infant's cues and attention capabilities. Understanding the cues of an infant and providing care to meet their needs allows the infant to gain trust and view the world as a safe place, allowing the baby to feel secure. Parents who are sensitive and responsive to their infant's cues will promote their development and growth. Our second intervention is to encourage physical closeness using skin-to-skin -skin contact and in-face position. As we know, kangaroo care has physiological benefits for the newborn, such as thermal regulation, but it also has behavioral benefits, such as aiding sleep and breastfeeding, and it also leads to improved neurodevelopment. Our third intervention is to educate the patient about the importance of the infant caregiver relationship as the foundation for development of trust, security, and bonding. The education will aim to teach the mother the importance of both parents in forming a relationship, explaining that bonding is a physiological process, so it is something that has to be formed and preferably by both parents. Engrossment plays a major role in developing a relationship with the father and studies have found that in successful father-infant bonds, there is reduced cognitive delay, a promotion of weight gain in preterm infants, and improved breastfeeding rates. Next slide, please. Select all that apply. Russian culture and pregnancy perspective, question number one. How does the Russian culture influence women's pregnancy? Is it A, strongly believe in the evil eye to jinx the pregnancy, B, they celebrate with balloons and confetti as soon as they know the woman is pregnant. C, they do not share the news of pregnancy until the baby's birth. D, not much parental involvement during the pregnancy. Or E, gifts for the baby are not given until the mother is at least six months or more far along in the pregnancy. Please answer in the chat box. The correct answer is A, C, and D. They strongly believe in the evil eye to jinx the pregnancy. C, they do not share the news of the pregnancy until the baby's birth. And D, not much parental involvement during the pregnancy. If you answered A, C, and D, great job. Question two, what hormone is released from the mother that can affect the health of her unborn child? A, dopamine, B, adrenaline, C, cortisol, and D, oxytocin. The correct answer is C. Cortisol is released when the mother is stressed, which can adversely affect the unborn child. Intrapartum considerations, Russian culture, question number three. What are Russian women subject to during intrapartum experience? Is it A, lack of anesthesiologists, B, lack of control and support system, C, lack of postnatal care, or D, lack of financial support. Please answer in the chat box. 
The correct answer is B, lack of control and support system. If you answered B, great job. Question number four, postpartum considerations. After birth, how long do Russian women usually stay in the hospital? A, one to two days. B, two weeks. C, three to four days. D, five to seven days. Please answer in the chat box. The correct answer is D, five to seven days. Newborn's question number five. In what ways does a baby massage benefit a newborn? Select all that apply. A, helps with allergies. B, release of oxytocin. C, stimulates growth. And D, helps with sleep. Please answer in the chat box. The correct answer is B, C, and D. And here are our references. Thank you for listening to our presentation.